What's up guys, how are y'all doing today? Today I wanna to talk about what the future of Tesla can hold and I think that Tesla will be a $10 trillion company in some time in the next decade. I'm probably gonna be wrong on this, but I do believe that Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world within the next decade. So I'm gonna be providing some reasons why I actually think that valuation will be justified in the future. So stay tuned, like and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll get right into it. So I'm gonna start off by talking about the automotive business. So the automotive business, by 2030, they'll be selling about 20 million cars a year. Now, why do I actually think that they'll be successful at selling 20 million cars a year? Well, if you look at their growth, the growth rate is at about 50% a year annually compounded, which means they're pretty much doubling in size every sort of like 18 months. Now you extrapolate that out to the next decade and by around 2030, they'll be selling actually more than 20 million cars, but some other factors can take into place, but more or less around 20 million cars per year. Now, if we go based on the rest of the automotive business, the, the one company that actually sells the most amount of cars is Toyota, and they only sell about 10 to 11 million cars per year. With that being said, Tesla's planning on doubling that feat, and I'm actually very confident that they'll actually achieve that, because if someone is actually gonna achieve it, it's gonna be them, it's not gonna be someone else. And obviously they got the A, first mover advantage, B, the biggest lead, and they're innovating quicker than anybody else. And their main product isn't actually the cars, it's actually the factories that make the cars. And Elon wants to get their factories to a level where it's like an alien dreadnought factory. So basically what that actually means is, you basically want the least amount of human interaction between the product, like the car itself, and the manufacturing line. So you want the least amount of humans. So humans can be supervising the robots and whatever. And today you can see most of their factory or their pictures or the videos that they take in the factory. You can see it's mainly taken up by robots. But if you see other plants, like say GM plant, there is a lot less automation going on and that basically just means that those plants are not suited for that. And one reason how you can get to that level is to actually design the car in a way that is more robot friendly. Most of the other cars aren't actually designed to be robot friendly, so that's why it's much harder to make a sort of alien dreadnought factory, whereas if you design the car in such a way that they are more robot friendly, which they are already doing, then yes, it actually makes a big improvement. And we see that in Giga Shanghai, that's their newest factory. You can see the interior pictures and videos that we have, the footage of that. That factory is basically as close as we can get to alien dreadnought in our current time right now. Now we're gonna have Giga Berlin going up pretty much within the next year. And then we got Giga Texas, that's gonna be operational by, 20, by the end of 2021. Those are gonna be even more advanced. So add all that together, they'll pretty much easily get to 20 million cars a year with that sort of like alien dreadnought sort of factory. And they'll probably actually have an alien dreadnought factory by that time. Think about the Cybertruck, for example, that's gonna be cold rolled steel, that's gonna be manufacturing, it's gonna be completely different compared to all their other vehicles. And what that's gonna mean is that they can actually manufacture that vehicle as how the robots would make it instead of relying on humans. So that's just one thing. Now coming on to my next point is gonna be the robo taxi business. Now Tesla is really big on software and we, we really haven't seen anything relating to robo taxi. Now why do I think that robo taxi is gonna be massive? Well, think about Uber and Lyft. Those are basically companies that are providing ride sharing services. But this is gonna be ride sharing without the actual driver in the car. So it'll basically be your car that you rent for the time it drives you to your destination. Then you get out, that car goes to another place, picks up another passenger, drives it to their destination, and dot, 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 blah, 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 whatever. And why I think this is gonna be a bigger deal for Tesla than Uber and Lyft, Uber and Lyft don't really make money. And the reason for that is they actually have to pay their drivers a reasonable wage and their operating expenses are much higher because they actually have to pay for their gasoline and all that. So really, if you want a livable wage, you really have to find a way to actually decrease your operating expenses. And now with electric vehicles, Tesla, basically operating expenses are basically nothing. They're very, very little compared to the entire picture. What that means is you can actually have a higher margin. So that means Tesla earns more per ride and you can actually pay the driver as well. But then eventually you'll cut out the driver. So basically you can decrease the price even more. That means at some point in the future, you'll get to a point where it'll be cheaper using the robo taxi than it will be to buy your own car. 
and it'll be just as convenient because robo taxis will be going around on your streets so much often and whatnot and what that's going to mean is unless you're living in the middle of nowhere like literally nowhere like nothing in like a 5 10 mile radius that means you'll basically have a robo taxi access to you especially in the city and it'll be much cheaper than owning a car. There are a lot of problems with owning a car. You need like driveway space, you need parking space, especially in the city, like say New York City, it costs more to actually park that car than it does to insure it and actually pay the, the loan or the lease or finance or whatever it really is. Those are gonna be some really big advantages that are actually gonna come to the city side and we can't even predict how big of a deal that's gonna be. Because think about it this way, before Uber, did anyone really think that ride sharing would actually become big? No, everyone thought that that's the stupidest idea you can ever have. Now look at it, they have a valuation of about $50 billion and with Robotaxi, it's going to be even bigger, an order of magnitude bigger. And now you add that in with their 20 million cars sold and all of their 20 million cars sold will actually have this Robotaxi feature. So just with those two alone, they're going to be the biggest manufacturer or just the biggest company just by those two factors alone. Now, let me bring you on to their energy side of the business. They have a complete and I mean like a complete overhaul of the battery business. They're producing half the amount of batteries that the entire world produces in a given year. So that means they basically double the capacity of the world's lithium ion battery production in a few, what, four years or something like that. That's nothing. Now imagine in the next four years, they'll double it. So they'll have even more capacity. They'll have 67% of the entire world's generation of batteries. Or production of batteries and that's just the battery factor alone obviously needed for those cars but you also need it for their energy side of the business and now just compound that say in eight years in 16 years or whatever right we're talking in 10 year terms say in eight years in the future well what where is Tesla going to be in their battery business? Well, they're going to be supplying batteries for the 20 million cars that they're producing, but they're also going to be supplying batteries for their energy products like the power pack, the power wall. And that is going to be an entirely new business because what you can do with the power wall and the power packs is there's a software now here too, again, software, auto better software. And basically what that does, it's, it buys energy when it's low. So for example, it's nighttime, or it can actually just talk to the grid. And what you can have is multiple vir like virtual power plants, for example. So your entire street can have these battery packs in the future in 10 years, right? And what that software is gonna do is essentially combine all those battery packs in all of those houses on your street into a virtual power plant. So it's gonna be basically, your entire street will act as a ginormous battery. And what it can do is overnight, it can charge itself. And then during the day, depending on how each house uses their energy, during the day, it can output it to the grid where the price of electricity is usually more than double than it was during the night if you're on like time or net metering, I think that's what it's called. So that is just another side of the business. And what that can do is over time, just pay for the battery itself. That software alone can just pay for the battery itself. And we're seeing this happening in real time as I speak in Australia, the Hornsdale battery pack. And what it's actually doing is buying energy when it's dirt cheap, like I mean dirt cheap, it's negative. So. Australia has this problem, they're getting blackouts, and basically when it goes negative, the Tesla power pack is actually buying electricity. So it's getting paid to store the energy and then it's selling that energy back to the grid. So it's getting paid both ways. Now that is an extreme example, obviously in some places of the world that might actually happen, but generally when you're speaking, in about six or seven years, you can probably pay off the battery entirely and the battery's still gonna last you another 10, 15 years at least at a minimum after that, maybe 20, 30, 40 years after that. So you're basically using that software and you're paying off the battery and that is basically, if I had had to imagine that, if an entirely new business was created entirely based off of that, the valuation of that itself would be over $1 trillion, just to give you some perspective. So their growth is insane. They got manufacturing cars, 20 million cars. No automaker does that right now. You got robo taxi business. Literally no one has it. No one has a market share over any robo taxi or full self driving or any other car related software option like that right now. Yes, people are trying, but no one actually has it. And I know Tesla will be the first. Then you got the energy side of the business. This is just the batteries. Okay, just the batteries, which means that is just the power pack, the power walls, and basically the batteries that go in your car. And you know, what else? They can make anything else. They can make batteries for phones if they get energy density even better, or they can make VTOL batteries for that. I didn't even discuss about that. And that is an entirely new business. You can combine that with the robo taxi. And what it can do is basically with VTOL out of your house, you can go take the VTOL and it will literally fly you. It's a flying car 
and it'd fly you basically wherever you want to go, say into downtown or wherever you really want to go, as long as it's within the range of the VTOL. Now, after the energy side of the business, you actually got the solar side of the business, and that is an entirely separate business on its own. With the solar side of the business, you got two products. One of the products is just plain old solar panels, but they're actually increasing the efficiency and just doing everything that they actually can to innovate and actually get the most amount of watts per square meter. And they're actually probably the leaders in that and they're actually the least expensive option, at least in the US. So they're getting to that level and they're actually innovating on other factors like bureaucracy. That's why a lot of company solar panels are just when you want to get them installed, it was so expensive because you had to go all, uh, through all these fees and whatever. But now you don't actually have to do that because Tesla has created this simple, simplistic model where you only have like four sets of solar panels. So you can buy a small, you can buy a medium, you can buy a large, or you can buy an extra large depending on how big or small your house is, you can choose which option fits best for you, depending on your energy needs. Combine that with a few power walls, with the AutoBidder software. Y you see where I'm going with this, right? The feature is entirely electric. I talked about that in my previous video. And basically, Tesla will literally have a monopoly on the entire energy side. At least, if not a monopoly, they'll have a massive market share on the energy side and just overall where the energy is being distributed. Now, Tesla also has solar roof tiles. Now, what are solar roof tiles? Basically, now if you're replacing a roof, those tiles or whatever asphalt shingles or whatever, those can be replaced with these solar tiles and basically it's an alive roof. What that means is that a live roof is basically generating you energy and actually paying you for that roof, for the energy that it's actually producing. You can use that, you can have power wells, at your home and basically that's essentially just as having solar panels on your roof but they look like normal shingles they look like a normal roof and there are about five million roof installations just in the usa per year now tesla has all that market share that they can capture because realistically think about it wouldn't you love to have a roof that actually pays you and pays itself over time getting a roof is expensive tesla might cost a bit more and obviously they're trying to bring the cost down it's right now in the early stages but eventually they'll probably get it probably get it to a price parity of a normal roof and then add in the cost of the roof actually producing energy for you and actually paying you or paying the grid in it or distributing the energy to the grid and actually paying you for that, over time, the roof can eventually pay for itself. So you see where I'm going with all of this, right? Robotaxi will pay off your car. Your energy, your power wall, automator software will pay off your power wall. Now you got your solar side of the business, whichever product you go for, it'll pay itself off over the years. And now you combine all of this into just one company where all of their products that you get can eventually pay themselves off. So you're basically essentially getting a free product over time if you look at the long-term vision of it. And you can see that their business model is actually very sturdy. That means it's very powerful because this is gonna be the future. And obviously Tesla's not gonna be the only market in this. There's gonna be other players. There's gonna be competition. I'm not doubting that. I'm just saying that Tesla will have a massive market share and massive lead over everyone else. And even if they don't, they'll have a pretty substantial share in the market and you combine all of that together and you're telling me Tesla won't be the most valuable manufacturer or just company in the world. I call that BS. I do feel like Tesla would be a $10 trillion company by 2030, maybe a bit after 2030, but nonetheless, a $10 trillion company and they'll be the first $10 trillion company. 10 years ago, did anyone think that a company could ever reach a valuation of one trillion dollars that was absurd today we got like four companies like that we got amazon apple microsoft and alphabet over one trillion dollars actually apple just recently beat two trillion dollars valuation it's happening it's happening so ten trillion dollars isn't that far away for talking by 2030 it is not so thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed this one. And let me know what you guys think. I'm probably going to be wrong on the $10 trillion valuation. I hope I'm actually understating it. I hope it actually grows more. But even at this level, we're talking about a 25x gain. So the stock that you buy right now, where the valuation is right now, every dollar you put in, it's going to turn into $25 by 2030 or just a bit after that. Take that into account when you're investing. This is just one. This is just a point that I wanted to make. All right. Now, obviously, you should do your own research and everything. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.